there now? Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, well, the audience here don't know that uh, apparently that the computers at the BBC have predicted a Tory landslide. Um, is that right? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, <coughs> Dennis will be surveying the drinks cabinet at number 10 now then, won't he? <laughs> Saying to Maggie, well, dear, what's your poison? <laughs> She'll say, well, Pim's number one. <laughs> Mind you, there's been a lot of poison about in the election, hasn't there? I mean, it's, it's been a campaign of smears, smears and more smears. I've started thinking the parties aren't run by politicians, but by gynaecologists. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Whatever happens tonight, Labour won't be having a celebration. They couldn't organise it. <laughs> It was a piss up in a brewery. <laughs> the main theme of Labour's campaign has been there's a sort of a belief in a caring society. They're going to look after the old, the innocent, and the confused. <laughs> and then you see what they've done to Michael Foote. <laughs> <laughs> now it must be said, Michael Foote fought the good fight. He struggled manfully, he grappled, he wrestled until he was exhausted. Then, of course, along came the election and he didn't stand a chance. <laughs> but the man the left loved to hate was Norman Tibbet. And I think it's time we squashed that stupid rumour about him. Norman Tebbit does not eat babies, OK? <laughs> Ridiculous. He's never ate a baby in his life. He's nibbled one or two, sure. <laughs> Who hasn't? I mean, it's very hard work canvassing, you know, you get very peckish. The chauffeur runs out of sandwiches and you see a quivering, fleshy pink here low. <laughs> He's only human. <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> of course, Smears. Smears ruined Peter Tatchell. Remember him? No, no I didn't think he would. <laughs> ah, losing a safe seat like Bermondsey is the quickest way to total obscurity. Unfortunately for Peter, his name is not really forgotten. After his defeat, it's sort of become synonymous with, like, embarrassment and awkward moments. <laughs> Things like, um, <clears throat> there's a, there's a tatchel on your nose. <laughs> that means there's, there's some tatchel on your shoe. Okay. <laughs> Well, like, oh, come on, who's dropped a tattoo? <laughs> there are some strange things going on in this election, you know. I was sitting at home the other night. I was reading the Communist Party manifesto, right? Well, I like scaring myself to death. <laughs> and I heard this scratching noise, like... Ch -ch -ch -ch. I started to look round and all I could hear was... <laughs> I thought, what on earth? <laughs> and I traced it and the noise was coming from the front door. <laughs> and I opened it up and there was this bloke. I said, yeah? He went, shh. <laughs> What's the matter? Shh. I'm campaigning on behalf of the Noise Abatement Society. <laughs> I just want to warn you that one of our vans is coming down the street. <laughs> I looked out and there was this electric milk float <laughs> with one of those giant loud speakers on the top with a towel stuffed inside. <laughs> and all you could hear was... <laughs> <laughs> bloke on the step was in agony. <laughs> ah! I thought I'm not standing for this, you know. So I, I turned the stereo on and put a Black Sabbath album on full blast. You know. <laughs> Cleared the street in seconds. <laughs> Mind you, all that did really was to encourage the Ecology Party canvassers to come along. Right? Now, the Ecology Party cared desperately for the environment. I know that because they left a heap of leaflets in my front garden. <laughs> they want to abolish social security and give everybody a grow bag. 
<laughs> They're also, of course, the party that want to legalise marijuana. Right? And the bloke that called round to see me was so high, he was knocking on the bedroom window. <laughs> always go, woo! Thank you. <laughs> you sit back and read your son. <laughs> anyway, he slowly came back down to earth and started to canvas the cat. <laughs> Stupid. And... <laughs> it's not even 18 yet. <laughs> If you'd lived in Mrs. Thatcher's constituency, you could have been canvassed by A.J. Noonan, who is the Bell's candidate. He ban every licensing law society. <laughs> they were going to call it the ban all licensing law society. <laughs> but it is Mrs. Thatcher's constituency. Doesn't like that sort of thing. I mean, what would happen if they got in? I mean, shoot, you know, they'd get rid of all the licensing laws, but then what about the rest of the policies? You know, wage increases will be held down to 4% plus what you can get back on the empties. <laughs> and on an international level, it'll be sort of, uh... OK, OK, Andropov, OK. Th this is the deal. <laughs> you, get, you get rid of all your SS20s out of Europe, um, we'll get the next round in. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if the ecology and the ban all licensing laws parties got together? The Econo Balls Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you couldn't go to the polls with a name like that, could you? No, you'd, you'd have to get rid of the alliance bit. No, <laughs> the thing that puzzles me about the alliance is that they purport to support proportional representation. David Owen said that. Well, Roy Jenkins couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I can wait. But supposing the alliance got in tomorrow, it will be because, be because the voters agree that there should be proportional representation. Therefore, having got into power without proportional representation, the alliance will have to bring in proportional representation, which means they'll lose the next election, because the other parties will be proportionally represented and will oust the alliance, who will then, of course, propose that proportional representation should be banned. <laughs> I have some friends with me tonight who are going to help me with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Mr. Nick Wilton, Miss Emma Thompson, and Mr. Chris Barry. Thank you. What have you found out, Nick? Well, the trades unions don't manipulate the Labour Party like a ventriloquist does his dummy. So said union leader David Basnett today, while smoking a cigarette and drinking a glass of water. <laughs> Uh, there is a way of cutting unemployment at a stroke, if only Norman Tebbit would have one. <laughs> of course, I never said Mrs Thatcher glories in slaughter. I said she's got a glorious daughter. And of course, it was first reported in The Guardian. <laughs> uh, Tory policies, of course, have helped create a lot of small businesses. Coal, steel, <laughs> There is a brash new breed of young conservatives. Give them enough rope and they'll hang somebody else. <laughs> Shirley MacLaine's hoping there will be no overall majority. She'd like a well-hung parliament. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Foote has smartened up his appearance for this election. <laughs> wanted to wear something decent to be buried in. <laughs> and uh, Kenny Everett's done himself a lot of good. Works flooding him. They want him to do the warm-up at the next Nuremberg rally. <laughs> that was in the worst possible taste. <laughs> and finally, Labour are to nationalise herpes. <laughs> Should stamp it out.
Hello and welcome to Call My Bluff. And that's certainly the name of the game tonight when we have the politicians versus the public. The first word goes to Mr. Foote's team, led by Mr. Healy. And it is unilateral. <laughs> well, Mr. Healy? Unilateral means going for a non-nuclear defence policy, but keeping Polaris unless negotiations with the Soviet Union break through. Mr. Foote? Unilateral means we... Uh, <laughs> yes, we... Uh, Unilateral means one side of disarmament. Yes, it, we, it would, uh, <laughs> in which we, we, we rid these islands of all weapons. Yes. <laughs> and over to you, Mr. Callahan. Well, 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 my friends have got it all wrong. No surprises there. The word is pronounced multilateral, and I want to make this quite clear. And it means keeping Cruz, Polaris, and everything else on offer. And I want to make this quite clear. Well, there you have it then. Quite a difficult one, really, and let's see who's got the true definition. <laughs> this is a commercial on behalf of the Liberal SDP Pact, or, as it's known, the Alliance Rebuilding Society. The Alliance constitutes a real alternative to the two major parties. Two minor parties. <laughs> If elected, both leaders will have a vital role to play. Our Prime Minister will be David Steele, when there's an R in the month, and Roy Jenkins, when there's a W. <laughs> Though they are not revolutionaries, what they plan to introduce is normally quite unheard of. Bill Rogers. <laughs> so what does the Alliance offer Britain? It offers a combination of socialism and capitalism. In other words, small piss of Tom Cat. <laughs> A complaint was made today that the BBC election coverage was biased. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cecil Parkinson <laughs> <laughs> spoke of the subtle ways in which slurs have been made against, surprise, surprise, the Conservative Party. <laughs> The Director General rejected this accusation, saying that the BBC always maintains its impartiality by treating the Labour Party... But <laughs> 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 wait for it. <laughs> the Alliance! <laughs> the main points again. Hello, you're lucky. You've just called me in because I should be going shopping in a day or two. I'm sorry to bother you well, like why this. Why are you then? If you're sorry to bother me, bothering me is a funny way of showing it. I would have thought by far the best thing would be not to bother me and then the problem wouldn't arise, would it, or am I just being me? I'm conducting an opinion poll. Well, in my opinion, you should bog off. I <laughs> just like to ask a few questions oh, like, about it. Like? I'm not so bloody sorry now, are we? Oh, you've changed your tune, or am I being very stupid, which I doubt. I want to ask you a question. All right, then ask me one. Ask me if I'm about to hit you in the grollies with a steaming hot kettle. Oh, I'll put you down as I don't know. <laughs> the atmosphere in Westminster today seemed to me to have a quiet, subdued, and yet slightly intriguing air about it. This was no doubt due to the fact that there were no politicians there and I was reading a murder mystery to pass the time. <laughs> there was, however, at around 11 o'clock, a short exchange between Enid, a polisher on the opposition backbenches, and from the government side, Daphne, a cleaner with special responsibilities for the windows. <laughs> Where, demanded Enid stridently, was the five quid Daphne owed her? Daphne, quite unperturbed and obviously expecting the question, replied that whilst she did not have it on her at the moment, and probably wouldn't have it tomorrow either, there was no doubt that all the indications were there that prosperity was just around the corner. This is John Cole at Westminster for the BBC. Good evening, ladies. And I begin, of course,
course, without mentioning the gentleman, because this initiative has got to come from us ladies. My husband was absolutely right about that. <laughs> so, it's been a very busy time, what with my launching Women for Defence and learning what a cruise missile is all in one week. Absolutely <laughs> hectic. Tonight, ladies, we're here in opposition to the Greenham Peace Women. And not because they're dreary and rather stained. Although well, they are, really, aren't they? I mean, let's face it. But, 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 but because they represent a serious threat, these misguided so-called women, to the peace and security of our country. And if they had their way, the Russians would walk straight in here and start raping our children and, worse still, destroying our property. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we set up this committee. We were originally to be called uh, War Immediately, but unfortunately the initials somewhat clashed with the WI, <laughs> and uh, so we've unfortunately landed up with a little bit of a mouthful. Country gentlewomen for unilateral rearmament on a massive scale. <laughs> and here's the slogan, which I hope you all like, Mummies for Missiles. It's rather lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Ladies, I implore you not to be fooled by these CND women. Why is it? Why is it that they hold hands around an innocent country airbase? <laughs> <laughs> Because they're lesbians. <laughs> I thought I'd cut that bit. Um, no, 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 ladies. Uh, it is we who represent the real Britain, the silent majority. We've already got up a petition with a thousand names on it. Two thousand if you ignore the hyphens. <laughs> Which just goes to show that what this country needs is women like us to stand up and be counted. Three, four, five. <laughs> well, it's a start. <laughs> it's bigoted. Uh, bland. Patronising. I like that. I look at it, you know, when I, uh, when I want to see uh, one side really, really clearly. I don't know, I love the jokes and the humour pages, you know, because they're often so, um, I don't know, uh, racist, you know, I think it's refreshing. The editorials are uncompromisingly biased. This is a really great read. Dogmatic. Fanatical. Petty and reaction. In a democracy, one wants a journalist to be a small-minded, hypocritical philistine. I do think that's important. I don't know, uh, it just makes me want to line my back, wave my legs in the air, and, uh, and strangle a Labour voter. The British press, from tits to Tories, we put it all into focus. Um, I've been looking through the list of some of the two and a half thousand candidates that have been standing, uh, well, some of them have been swaying <laughs> in today's election. Uh, some of the names are quite astonishing, and these are for real, honestly. Uh, in Antrim South, there's a candidate called Laverty. <laughs> he was going to stand for the bog side. But <laughs> In Bolton East, there's two candidates called Allcock and Ball, <laughs> while there's an STP dick in Dundee. <laughs> uh, the Tories are on Speed in Ashford, and Labour's on Pot in Bath. <laughs> there's a Mooney in Lewisham, and an independent Deary in Wolverhampton. <laughs> The Liberals have got a mole in Chelmsford. <laughs> <laughs> While the Alliance have got a Burke in Brighton <laughs> and a Wally in Stoke. <laughs> um, I've been looking through the manifestos as well, and I wonder if the people who make up these manifestos ever wonder what would really happen if things were taken to their ultimate conclusion. For instance, the Labour manifesto states that Labour will ban all blood sports, like fox hunting, cockfighting, Shirley Williams baiting. <laughs> and it's interesting that under a, a Labour government, you won't be able to hunt foxes, but you can still catch fish. Now, I don't suppose that decision's got anything to do with the fact that there's four and a half million anglers who have a vote, and a lot of fish you haven't. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. 
angling's okay because wrenching a three-barbed hook through the mouth of a fish <laughs> is totally painless. <laughs> I mean, there's some poor fish out there who's been hooked like 300 times saying to himself, <laughs> <laughs> Fish are really stupid, aren't they? I mean, they're swimming around, they go, oh boy, just look at that big juicy worm. I know it's gonna happen, it's gonna hurt like hell, but I just can't resist it. <laughs> it's a bit like voters and election promises, isn't it? I wonder how many of us will wake up in the morning stranded on the bank gulping for air. <laughs> Satire, this is Shakespeare. <laughs> the animal lib faction obviously have quite an influence in many parties. Now, the animal livers are those people who care so much for every form of life, no matter how low, that if they catch you maltreating animals, they send you a letter bomb through the post. <laughs> and hope your dog doesn't pick it up first. <laughs> I think animals' libs should work both ways. I mean, we should be allowed to crap on pigeons. <laughs> if animals' lib do have their way, right, the country will be in chaos. I mean, for a start, they'd let out all the laboratory animals, right? I mean, that's going to be a right pain, isn't it? All those beagles coming up to you in the street trying to bum a cigarette. <laughs> Then they'd set all the pigs loose onto the streets. I'm sorry, that's the Tory manifesto. <laughs> Battery hens would be released, millions of them everywhere, laying eggs all over the place until after a couple of days there'd be just one left leg. That's the battery hen fitted with the Duracell. <laughs> you know, today has been a very special day for lots of people who, for the very first time, have done it. <laughs> Thousands of virginal voters who have been saving it all up, waiting for the right candidate to come along, who <laughs> finally lost their innocence. Do you remember the first time you voted? Up till then, it had just been sniggers behind the bike sheds. And <laughs> <laughs> jokes you didn't understand, you know. <laughs> embarrassing questions at home, like, Mum, where do MPs come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's a very wonderful thing. Me and your father going to a polling booth and <laughs> put a cross in a box. <laughs> and we didn't believe them, did we? <laughs> we just can't imagine your mum and dad doing it. <laughs> and then the big day arrived and you were all nervous and shy. You'd read all the political party magazines and the well thumb pages. <laughs> Books on technique where it explains that it's not the size of your cross that counts. <laughs> it's where you put it. <laughs> All those tips on tactical variations, how if you were voting away from home all the time, you'd get the proxy. <laughs> So the time comes to actually get down there, you, you go out to your car, you, you check it's the right day again, eh? You don't want to make a fool of yourself like your mate who voted yesterday because he suffers from premature election. <laughs> I spoiled his paper. <laughs> You drive to the polling station. The officer gives you a knowing smile. <laughs> How can they always tell it's your first time? <laughs> anyway, you coyly draw the curtains and then it's just you and that slip of a voting paper. <laughs> I don't know about you, but the first time I did it, it only took 30 seconds. <laughs> 
What a letdown! I thought, well, what's all the fuss about? I mean, you hear about blokes who can make it last for 15 minutes. <laughs> How do they do it? Mind you, you can really, really relax afterwards, can you? Lean up against the polling booth. <laughs> light up your post-electoral woodbine. <laughs> The one afterwards is always so good. <laughs> then it's back home to await the outcome. Now, all of you out there who've done it today for the first time, <laughs> I know how you're feeling. Sheepish, concerned, <laughs> pacing up and down, worried in case you've got the country into trouble. <laughs> What will it be? What will it look like? <laughs> will it have all its senses? <laughs> will it be mine? <laughs> you can be sure of one thing. Whatever it is, it'll be an ungrateful bastard. <laughs> who brought you the most terrifying experience ever to hit the screen. Now comes the ultimate collection of monsters and maniacs in Hammer House of Commons. You've seen the evil dead, the incredible drinking man, the Owen, and the non-entity. Now see all these and more together. They'll plague your mind. They'll chill your spine. They'll give you a pain a bit lower down. <laughs> Can you think of anything fouler? Hammer House of Commons, coming soon with full supporting program. Witchfinder General, the story of how Keith Joseph discovered Margaret Thatcher. Where have you been? Oh, don't start. I just nipped in the unemployment statistics, didn't I? <coughs> what? Unemployment statistics, it's shit cockney political slang. Unemployment statistics, the brown ball. Yeah, I just nipped in for a quick couple of Dennis Thatchers. Oh, Kinnock. You're Dennis, aren't you? Look, I only had three pints. How can I be Dennis Ely? You <laughs> silly Eric Effer. <laughs> three pints? It's half past ten. I mean, do me a foreign aid. Well, then me bike broke down, didn't it? I've had to push it all the way home in the pouring rain. Look, I'm James Pryor, I am. Absolutely soaking wet. <laughs> You're right. What's the opinion poll with it? Wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's got a throttle stops going on it. Yeah. It needs a new what Thatcher's been doing to the economy. Screwing it? <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised he needs a new screwing it way you treat it, leaving out in all weathers. Is that anything down out there? Well, I just nicked in for a warm, didn't I? I'm going to pop out in a minute and do a Belgrano on it. Belgrano? <laughs> <laughs> Cover-up job. <laughs> Tory manifesto, Tory manifesto. It's not, I'll do it. Well, don't tell Daily Mail. I am not <laughs> Daily Mail. Look, I'm telling you the honest Guardian, I swear. <laughs> Don't talk Esseltine. You're talking a pile of steam in Esseltine. Well, thatcher me stiff. I wish I'd stay down the pub. Don't know why you didn't. Well, I was Daily Mirror, wasn't I? Daily Mirror? The only one left? The only one left? I'm not surprised at this hour. No SDP, is it? No bloody seven-day wonder. Well, that's it. I'm off back down a pub, and I'm going to get absolutely tebbit arsed. <laughs> you can't talk to him, that's what. It's a new youth opportunity scheme. Complete bleeding waste of time. Good evening and welcome to Election Ramp. And in our regional studios tonight, we have three leading party spokesmen. First of all, in Glasgow, we have Mrs Shirley Williams. Can I ask you, Mrs Williams, are you prepared to admit that the reason for the SDP's foundation is to salvage the careers of political has-beens. The whole aim of this is to try to support elderly and disabled people in the community as long as possible. I must say, that's quite an admission. But it costs money, 
I, I, and I, I don't pretend that it doesn't cost money. Now, please, don't let's get on to your scheme about recruitment by credit cards, please. <laughs> Could I ask you, if elected, what type of policies would you pursue? I can't choose. I really can't. I'm sorry. I Go. just can't. Well, thank you, Mrs. Williams. <laughs> now, in Birmingham, we have Mr. Tony Benn. <laughs> Mr. Benn, having read the policies in your manifesto, I'd like to ask you why you'd like to put them into effect. For very good reasons, really, <laughs> that uh, they've been tried before and failed. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Benn, isn't this a bit all high in the sky? I mean, with, I mean, with its present leadership, when can Labour expect to regain power? Uh, in about uh, 60 years. <laughs> to Mr. Forecast there, Mr. Ben. Tell me, what do you see as the main drawback of being a Labour candidate? It doesn't lead to a proper job at the end. <laughs> and finally, in Cardiff, you have Mr. Willie Whitelaw. Uh, Mr. Whitelaw, I'd like to ask you, when you're alone with the Prime Minister, what kind of things does she say to you? Very long sentences indeed, and will continue to do so. <laughs> Care to clarify that statement, Mr. Whitelaw? My relationship with Margaret Thatcher is quite simple. Now, please be specific. A lot of people would like to know precisely what the pair of you get up to. Uh, if they like to send into the Home Office, they will get there. We have a booklet showing exactly the position. And, and just finally, to illustrate what I've been saying. The average weekly shopping basket in 1979 contained this. A loaf of bread, milk, eggs and cheese, potatoes, mushrooms, and a haddock. <laughs> All for three and a half pence. <laughs> now let's look at this same basket after four years of Tory mismanagement. <laughs> the bread. The bread's gone all mouldy. <laughs> the milk, the cheese and the eggs are a putrefying mess. <laughs> and the rest of it has all rotted into a stinking goo. <laughs> Just imagine what it will be like after another four years. <laughs> so, vote Alliance and we'll give you a new bag to put it in. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Question Time, <laughs> where we have members of the three main parties to answer questions on policies and <laughs> other issues. <laughs> and I want to get in as much uh, time, as uh, much questions as possible in the short space available, so I won't introduce the candidates. My name is Sir Robin Day, and can we get on with the first a question, please? Yes, you but the back young lady, the ugly lady in the cheap headwear. <laughs> Please don't say hello, because when you've said hello, and you've said hello to the members, and we've all said hello to each other, and exchanged pleasantries, of course, we never have any time to answer questions. And remember, you couldn't do this in the days of Gladstone and Disraeli, because there were no televisions then. <laughs> so, make use of the wonders of technology by asking your question without saying hello, please. Good evening. Good evening. Get on with the question, please, will you? Do you think that in a TV discussion programme such as this, that the public should refrain from exchanging greetings such as good morning, how are you, and another one I think Sir Robin just covered, so as to facilitate a greater body of the programme content can be devoted to politics. Madam, the subject's been covered, for goodness sake. I said don't say hello. When I said that, I naturally assumed you wouldn't take that to include good afternoon, how are you, how's your dog, nice weather, we can have all those because we're pressed for time and I do want to keep on, don't want to keep on reminding you <laughs> about women. <laughs> Time is short and reminding you about brevity takes up a lot of valuable time. <laughs> Can we have our next question, please? Thank you, the gentleman in the blue dress sitting behind the man with... <laughs> yes, you sitting behind the man with stained teeth. Come on. How will the Alliance candidate react to the allegations that their party is not in touch with the working class? Come on, Jane, could you answer the question, please? Oh, well, we are. Um, we're very much a party who's in touch with the working class, um, and anyone who says we aren't is just a, a horrid little oik. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. Your next question, please. The lady at the back with the blue apron on. Uh, could I have two Kia Aura oranges, a mint king cone, and a packet of buttercakes? Thank you, sir. Yes, the man with the inflamed liver. <laughs> My second question is to the Labour candidate. 
Would you say that if Labour lose this election, it's due to your squabbling in public? Would you answer the question, please, George? It's not my squabbling, pal. It's those deranged, loony, commie cressets in the National Executive, pal. I mean, like, I mean, it's they that argue with me, you know what I mean? It's not my squabbling. Yes, thank you very much. Just one, one last brief question, and could you make it as brief as possible? The very short man on the left, please. Okay. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't, don't, if a hello does slip out, for goodness sake, don't, just keep on going. Don't apologise for saying hello, because we waste even more time if you apologise for saying hello. So keep on going, will you? Oh, sorry. And if I chastise you, don't apologise, just keep on going. Come on, just keep, cast the question, please. Oh, well, I'd like to ask the uh, Tory candidate, um, is it true that when members of Parliament appear on shows like this, all their answers are written in advance, so as not to expose their real personalities? Great, could you ask the question? Well, this is absolutely si preposterous. Step new peril indent. <laughs> we can't afford underlying speechwriters, brackets emotionally. Unlike the Labour Party, <laughs> caps who are handed two and a half million pounds verified by the trade union movement. Applause. <laughs> I've got to cut in there, Graham, uh, beaten by time once again. I won't waste the remaining seconds by thanking everybody. I think you'll all agree. I think we've managed to cram a lot of election discussion into a very short time. Uh, my name is Sir Robin Day, <coughs> and I won't waste any more time by saying good night. <coughs> oh dear, I don't have a watch, but I gather that <coughs> we appear to have finished 54 minutes early. <laughs> Carrot is currently appearing at the Dome, Brighton. Nominations for the 1983 general election are Best Performance in a European Role, Roy Jenkins. <laughs> Best Performance in a Revival, David Steele. <laughs> Best Actress in a Leading Role, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Best Actor in a Supporting Role, Michael Foote. <laughs> and the victor. Remember you heard it first on Carrot Slib. I'm sorry, Mr. Dimbleby and Sir Robin, to steal your thunder, but the winner of the 1983 general election is... <laughs> <laughs> Well, all is about to be revealed in the all-night election 83 results service next on BBC...